And this is um, this is the the Reverend James Cameron. This is a this is a pillar of the community, the local Reverend. You say he was a powerful man. Oh, oh he God! Was, in your community, he was a a personality <coughs> larger than life. He was. Um, I'm, I've spoken. I've, I've I've been contacted by people since. He was very good looking. He frequently smelt of whiskey. That's one of my overbiding memories. Is his smell of whiskey, and he was and. You know, as all I can say is that as an eight and a half year old child, nine year old child, what he did I didn't understand because as a child you have no words for that because mm -hmm. it's behaviour that you don't know, you've never met. It was a different society in the 60s than it is today, you know, I'm, we'd, without the magazines, televisions, internet. So we didn't actually, I didn't actually know what sex was. When he showed me these graphic photographs, when he showed me Playboy magazines, when he did what he did, I didn't actually know what he was because doing. Because he was in your house. He, he was, was in my house, in he was house. in my bedroom. How did it shape you as, as a now an adult woman? Um, well, you know, I, I can't, how can I say it's damaged me because, you know, my, my career has been, I ran a successful business, I became an MP. But I would you have done those things, things, do you think? I'm not sure if I would have done. I, I, I do know that it makes you very different from the moment it happens, you feel as though you're swimming alongside the rest of society because you have this, this, secret, this secret, you have this knowledge that nobody else, none of your friends have and it makes you very different from everybody else and I think that stays with you all your life. So I think it makes you think, well, of course I can write best-selling books, of course I can run a successful business because I'm slightly different so I can do that because I'm kind of like, the normal rules are not holding me down. <coughs> but you say you were still haunted by the shame really. of it. Mm. There was still a shame. For, for oh, the me, shame Even though is, you, um, as a little girl, had done nothing wrong. Mm. Yeah. The sh I, I think the overriding feeling that carries continues with you throughout your life is disgust and shame. I can only explain it this and way, anger? really. Yeah, uh, certainly once I had my own daughters, once my first daughter was born, then I began to feel the anger. But, you know, one of the reasons why you don't tell people is I would feel that talking to you, that what you would want to do after speaking to me would be go and wash your hands, that you would feel dirty having spoken to me. That's, that feeling has been with me all of my life until now. And all I can say is that on social media, the mainstream media, people I've met every day have just been overwhelmingly kind. Mm. And that is a good thing because what I want other people to see who've suffered as I did is to see it hasn't been bad for me. People haven't been disgusted. People haven't been nasty to me. So they can disclose as well.